Wednesday. If you're new here, my name is Sarah. I'm a PhD student at Indiana University studying English, rhetoric and composition. My research looks at vlogs, embodied writing, feminism, a bunch of really cool things. And I would love it if you would press the subscribe button. If you're not new here, welcome back. It's gonna be another couple days in my life getting the vlog started midweek because we had a bit of a, just got an email, a bit of a bumpy start to the week. Um, just lacking motivation. I had a really busy weekend. Megan's sisters came into town. So I feel like I needed like yesterday and Monday to just sort of like recover and ease my way back into things. Um, but it was a lot of fun. So I am going to teach in seven minutes. I am doing a bit of a fun class today. So the class is about vlogs called public storytelling through video. And we are in the final unit of the, like the final content unit, the last unit's like revision of the course. And this is where students film vlogs of their own. And I'm like so excited to see what students make. Um, so today we are talking about rhetorical and technical considerations for making vlogs. And we're gonna go over the rhetorical situation once again, talk about how communicator, audience, and message impact sort of the vlogging storyboarding process. We're looking a lot at like the impact of storyboarding and like planning out your content. Then we're gonna also look at genre, modality, circulation, talk about the considerations of really like trying to embody your audience and put yourself in their shoes. Do you imagine them watching this on a phone, on a computer, on a tablet? and how that impacts what you create. And then the technical considerations, we are looking at A-roll versus B-roll, lighting, sound, all of that good stuff. And then students will work together to create storyboards for a 30 second mini film that they're gonna create in small groups. And then they're gonna film in class. We're gonna see how this goes, cause it's on Zoom and students are in breakout rooms, but I don't know. Might be interesting. I hope it works out okay at the very least. And I'm gonna hop on Zoom and I'll keep you guys updated. Hi vlog, uh, Megan here. Um, today, Sarah and I tried butter pecan from Dunkin'. I got the latte, Sarah got an iced coffee. I, I like it a lot for me to 10 out of 10. Whoa, I didn't know you liked it that much. Well, okay, that could be a little dramatic, but it could be a little bit of a hyper fixation moment. To me, I think it's sweet, but not too sweet. Megan, 10 out of 10 is reserved for the chai with the pumpkin cold foam. Oh, okay. Then it's like, um, it's five average. What's a five? Five is, yeah, five is average. Okay, but like, what's, what's an example? Like, just like a vanilla latte? Yeah, yeah. To me, this is like a seven then. Okay. Okay. That was not a ten. <laughs> I kind of like said that and I was like, I don't know if I fully mean that. Do you see the way I just I gaslit you? No, but I wanted that. <laughs> I wanted that. I needed that. I needed that check. I got it too, and I really like it, but I didn't get a latte. Like Megan said, I got the iced coffee. It's also Pirelli's birthday today. AKA it's the day we found her. She stumbled into her backyard one year ago today. Per oh, Angel. Per happy birthday. Do you want some tuna tonight? I'll get a cheap. No, she wants. I'll get a cheap can of tuna at the store. Oh, she wants to go outside. That's what she wants. She's longing. We'll let her out. I'll let her out. Okay, just planned all the meals for the week and I'm gonna go to Kroger. Well, I planned the meals yesterday and then just now I like wrote out all the ingredients for each meal. I'm gonna go to Kroger, get some stuff for it. I made a plan of what I wanted to do today last night and I didn't time block, but I broke it into like segments and like I ordered it. And according to my plan yesterday, I was supposed to go from teaching and then hop into disc writing, but I'm just like, I can't do that right now <laughs> and I know this is me like procrastinating and wanting to put it off but I know I'll feel better if I just get it over with but I don't know teaching and that coffee and I'm just like I gotta get out so I'm gonna do this grocery shopping and then when I'm then when I get back I will do some disc stuff and I have a zoom meeting at three I need to help my friend Joanna find an outfit for a y2k party she's going to um, and then I want to get some grading done so that's the overview of today.
back from Kroger, gonna show you guys a grocery haul because it was a big little trip, spent over 90 bucks. Okay, so first up, we got some broccoli to go in a sort of bowl that we're making and to have as a side when we do veggie burgers. Some lettuce just for salads and everything. This lettuce, you do have to like wash it yourself, but I feel like this private selection brand from Kroger is a step above the Kroger brand. Some quinoa, some rice, some tofu. These veggie burgers, I typically like the ones that come in the purple box rather than like the green box because I think those are like chicken. Um, I hope these are good though because I got a different brand veggie burger and they were gross. Way too like meaty. These eggs are on sale. Happy eggs are my favorite eggs. They just like taste the best, but they're pretty expensive. But these were like $2 off, so I got them. And then these protein waffles are really expensive, but I need to get into the habit of eating breakfast and not just a piece of toast for breakfast. And then I got these protein blueberry muffins as well. Again, so I can be in a breakfast era. Some sourdough toast some potatoes i feel like i got the wrong ones because i realized that the mashed potato recipe calls for you to like peel them and these don't look like they're meant to be peeled so maybe i just won't peel them heavy cream for the mashed potatoes some almond milk pizza dough blueberries the secret to making box muffins taste really good is to use some fresh blueberries in addition to like the canned blueberries it comes with or the like dehydrated ones raspberries strawberries all the berries were on sale some lemon pepper seasoning the tofu bootable recipe called for it and this was the smallest one they had so this is totally meant for grilling but this is like the cheapest smallest one they had some bananas some parmesan cheese for the mashed potatoes spinach i have been buying organic spinach lately and i feel like it's worth it rather than the kroger brand spinach which like goes bad in like two days these crispy onions to go on top of some sushi that we're gonna make, veggie sushi, cucumber, carrot for the sushi, chives, cherry tomatoes, a pepper, and an avocado for Megan. Onion, lemon, and red onion here. The produce section at Kroger was like, for once, well stocked and everything was looking good. And then one last thing, I got some sparkling water for Megan. today involves some reading so I read skimmed through a book that had been on my to read list for quite some time and I was just skimming through the intro and the first chapter I was like oh, this doesn't feel like it's gonna be useful and I thought it would um, and then I was like let me just poke around in this last chapter and that was actually very very interesting it talked about the relationship between bodies and online spaces um, and how a lot of times people think that the internet is this really like disembodied space but actually people act in accordance with like their own embodied categories like people don't often pretend to be a different gender uh pretend to be a different race um that doesn't happen in the way that people think that it does aside from like rare instances of like catfishing and stuff and i noticed like sort of a continuity with that in the class that i taught in the spring I had students create an influencer portfolio and I gave them the option to create like a fictional influencer identity and it was very rare that students took me up on that like maybe a handful of students out of like 50 of them so that's just interesting to note that this might be more of a myth than we think that the internet is this disembodied space um because a lot of my argument argues <laughs> that video specifically vlogs are like hyper embodied so seeing how to like fit that in into like the exigence of things and then the second thing i did was i looked through the first chapter of this other book which has also been on my list to read and it's an interesting book because it's sort of like a writing guide um like here's how to do personal writing 
and all I want is like a freaking one sentence definition of personal writing that feels congruent with what I've written so far. In my last vlog I talked about how I asked ChatGPT for this, um, but the best I get here is what does writing the personal mean? What makes something personal? We think of the personal as akin to self-disclosure. Private information about the self that another cannot discern from your nonverbal cues. So it's interesting to think of personal writing as like an act of, dis of disclosure. Um, what makes information personal is that it touches core areas of our identities. But I feel like everything touches core areas of our identity. It's just like whether that's making it explicit or not. And it says it makes us feel vulnerable. But again, all writing makes us feel vulnerable. So I don't know. I'm in this like contradictory predicament where I'm like all writing is personal why is it even necessary to define it um but at the same time personal writing seems to be like in this relationship of tension with academic research-based writing so that's a little sneak peek into what's going on in my head right now um so needless to say I need to chill out for a second before hopping into this meeting so I think I'm gonna read my book for fun for a little bit before I get on this Zoom call with the team of instructors from the class that I taught in the fall, one of them being my advisor, because he's in every single committee, everything that I do here at IU. Um, he's just in everything, period. But we are presenting at the Computers and Writing Conference, which is in California, but we are presenting online because it is too expensive. And we need to like talk about our presentation. We're gonna record an asynchronous video. Um, and a lot of it is showing examples of student work from when I taught that class where students played Minecraft in the fall. And we have like a lot of examples and like videos made. So we just need to talk about what we're going to do for like the narrative aspect of the presentation and connecting it to the proposal. Okay, a couple hours later, well, several hours later now, I had the meeting with my advisor and the other member of our sort of teaching team and we brainstormed what we're going to do for the presentation. I kind of thought that like that meeting was just where we were going to like record the presentation, but we just planned the presentation. So now I have to record the presentation and make a video. Um, so that's probably going to take up my whole day tomorrow, which I thought would be devoted to the disc, but it is what it is um but i think it'll be fine and hopefully it'll be something that like we could maybe consider submitting for like publication since we put a lot of work into the presentation and stuff like that and then i met up with my friend joanna we went to target and goodwill to find her her y2k outfit um it took a little longer than i thought it was going to but i was vibing it was fun and now i filled up this entire tumbler with water because i feel really dehydrated and i'm going to make a new recipe for dinner Here's Din, pickled onions, some broccoli, some lemon pepper tofu, and some quinoa. And then it's, I made a homemade hummus sauce with Dijon, Dijon mustard, lemon juice. Hi vlog. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's good. It is 10.08. Megan and I finished watching Below Deck sailing, special on television right now. And I gave Pirelli her tuna for her birthday, and of course she didn't eat it because it was like human grade tuna, but not like top tier expensive tuna. And she's a bougie gal. She knows better. Um, the dinner wasn't great. The tofu was like really salty for some reason. Um, but I tried my hardest. And I am vlogging because I wanted to update you guys. I'm gonna do some grading. Um, at 10 p.m. because I'm feeling guilty about not getting as much stuff done today as I wanted to. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna try and knock out just three projects and then I will have completed everything on my to-do list. Grading can really suck sometimes, especially when you leave it for the last minute and then you feel really stressed out that you're behind this sort of imaginary deadline that you post for yourself to have grades back. Um, and grading videos can take a really long time. But all this to say, when you watch a really good student video and just see like a really, really creative and you could just tell it was like made with a lot of like passion and excitement video from a student, there's like nothing like it. And ah, uh, I love that feeling.
Good morning. Well, afternoon. It's already after 12. I stayed in bed until like 9 a.m. this morning. Woke up at 8, but just was scrolling my phone for like an hour, um, which is something that I used to do all the time, but I really tried to work myself out of. But I gave myself a little treat today. And then I woke up, made some muffins, have some laundry going. And the big project that I did was trying to put together some bar stools. So this is the bar stool in question. I have another one in that box that I have to put together. They were a really good deal on Target's website and Target's easy to return if you don't like them. I like the gray. I think that it matches the gray in the rug. That's Pearlie's toy. Um, but if you see, if you lean back, it's kind of precarious because I can't quite get these two screws to screw in. Um, I thought it was a user error, like a me problem, but a lot of people in the reviews said they have that same issue. So I think I'm gonna FaceTime my brother and ask for his help later today. I was trying a bunch of things. I ended up FaceTiming my mom because I tracked her and said she was home. Um, but she was like, I gotta go to a meeting, I don't have time. Um, and then she sent me like some YouTube videos. She just like knows a little, well, she knows a lot about a lot. So I thought that she'd be a good person to call. Moms, they know everything. But I don't know, like you can sit in it. It's just not stable. And that makes me nervous because it's a chair, not just like a, a bookshelf or I don't know, like a cabinet or something. Like it's something you are sitting on that feels dangerous. And I don't know, I, I feel good that I'll be able to get it. I just am scared to like mess with unscrewing it and rescrewing it because uh, I think it kind of already like maybe like stripped one of the screws or messed up like the hole that it's supposed to screw into. So I'm gonna wait for a second opinion. But in the meantime, I'm gonna make some spinach and eggs and some sourdough toast and then get into doing some school stuff for today. Okay, yum. This is so fun. I think I might be addicted to the butter pecan latte. It's just so good. Okay, I have my jazz music playing, a candle burning, my Duncan and some water, and I'm hoping Pirelli will come up here and sit with me. And now I'm gonna get started on making that conference presentation. So the first thing that I need to do is look back through some of the final projects and some of the very first projects my students submitted in my spring semester of my social media influencer course because I need to reach out to the students and ask if I have their permission to include like an overview of their project and if they want me to disclose their name or not so they can receive credit. So I need to send them emails so I have time for them to get back to me and then I'm going to make myself not a full script of what I want to say for this presentation but like a outline sort of loose bullet points so that's what I make for when I do like a sit down chat for YouTube. I feel like really nervous for this for some reason even though I literally make videos all the time like every single day every single week but I don't know maybe because my advisor's gonna see it or something. And I feel like because I make videos so often, I have like this standard of like, I have to make good videos. And it's like, I just record my life. Like, I don't know. But I know it's just a lot of pressure I'm putting on myself. Um, the goal is to just do it. Doesn't have to be great. Okay, feeling good from this coffee. Got a bunch of brainstorming done. Sort of made an outline for what I'm gonna say in the video. Sent a bunch of emails to students. I've already heard back from some of them. So I love that. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the part where I highlight student work towards the end. Um, so that way I can adjust as needed if I don't hear from students in time or if they would prefer me not to share their work. Um, but I think I'm going to go get ready, do my hair, throw on some makeup so I can record this first part. I don't have it, like I mentioned, super scripted and it might take a couple of tries, but I need to remember to do this for vlogs all the time and for sit down chats. So let's do it. All glammed and finished filming. It was harder than I thought it was gonna be. I wish that I would have just like honestly set up my vlog camera because I think I would have felt more comfortable talking to the camera than I would have doing it on Zoom. Also the internet connection cut out for a second and I was recording to the cloud, not to my computer and rip that section of the recording. Um, I don't know, I had to like start over like literally five different times. And one time I started over when I was like halfway through. Anyway, it is done and it's definitely good enough for the conference, for an async video for the conference. But if this is something how my advisor mentioned wanting to like potentially submit for like a journal or use for other things, I might ask if I could like re-record it or something because I don't, I don't love what I have. Um, 
But anyway, I started lesson planning because my advisor is observing tomorrow and I'm like pretty nervous about that. And I really wish that he would have observed yesterday because I think yesterday would have been a better class. Um, I'm a little bit stumped about what to do in class tomorrow, I can't lie. So I might take a little break, let my brain rest, and maybe brainstorm with Megan tonight. Um, I think I'm going to read my book for fun. I'm reading tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. It's really good so far, you guys. It feels really smart, but it doesn't feel like it's making me feel like I'm back in a literature class again. So that's good. Um, I'm just like really excited about it. I'm, I'm pressing pause on Harry Potter. I'm in the middle of the fifth book, but it was getting a little slow. So I'm gonna eat a snack and then read. In the drive-thru, getting myself a second treat. Trying a peach milkshake from Chick-fil-A. It is 9.20, not even fully dark out yet, and I'm in my cute and cozy PJs. Today was a very weird day. Um, typically, I feel like my days have like some semblance of routine, and I think I just really threw everything off by waking up and deciding to try and build those bar stools, uh, which I thought I'd have energy to come back to tonight, but willpower is a finite resource, as Megan always says. Um, I also spent some time lesson planning. I laid in the hammock and read for like an hour. Uh, well, I FaceTimed my nephew for part of that too. But I don't know, ate dinner at like five o'clock, then got a Chick-fil-A milkshake at like six o'clock. It was, it was just like a weird atypical day. Um, but it wasn't necessarily a bad day because I feel like I did quite a bit of stuff. Anyway, I finished lesson planning and I ran it by Megan because I was feeling just like nervous about it that it just like wasn't a good lesson plan particularly to be observed by my advisor and she was like no this looks good this looks great so even if she was lying to me it, she did what she needed to do I feel better um and I kind of just want to get it over with tomorrow <laughs> and I can't believe that tomorrow's already Friday but thank god it's Friday that's Pirelli's toy I'm going to make myself a very strange midnight snack because I ate dinner at five o'clock. Um, I'm gonna have one of these blueberry protein muffins that I made in the, I made earlier today. And a poppy. So not for nothing, but I made a TikTok pouring some poppy and poppy commented on the TikTok. So poppy, work with me, you're my dream. Brand. Oh, did you mean to watch? Yeah, but I, I was just curious. I never had to go to the cold one tonight. It's just not really a day until. <sighs> Here, I am watching these insane TikToks about this woman with bunions. Do you want to watch? With bunions? Yes. Are they gross? It's insane. I gasped out loud. Will they make me want to gag? They didn't make me want to gag, but like, yeah, her feet were really deformed. She had to have like reconstructed multiple surgeries to reconstruct her foot. I think it will it scare me? Because you know I have foot issues. Good morning. Happy Friday. So I just finished the class where my advisor observed and I'm trying really hard to not dwell on it because I just don't think it was an accurate reflection of how the semester's going, what I'm like as a teacher. It's just hard to be observed this late in the semester in a summer course when students are like clearly really burnt out and tired and like no one wants to be there and i felt like students just weren't very participatory i just felt like it wasn't the ideal class to be observed i just i didn't love the lesson plan that i had created so i just like don't think it was my best work and i'm trying like really hard to remember that like it's not any value to ob observation like he's gonna write me a good recommendation letter no matter what it's just hard and then it's like making me get in my head because i want to apply for this teaching award and i'm like yeah but like this was bad because you're a bad teacher like and I know that that's not true like I would if I heard someone say that I would be like oh, okay we need to like reverse that kind of thinking but I don't know I just I found myself being like very hard on myself very self-critical this past week 
and I'm trying to remind myself to be gentle with myself and like I don't think I'm gonna meet the deadline that I had in mind for my writing and things just aren't great right now. It is 1.22 p.m. I feel better after eating some Jimmy John's for lunch, some sour cream and onion Pringles. That's why I went to Jimmy John's because I just wanted an excuse to be able to eat those Pringles after I saw someone eating them on the plane coming back to Bloomington like two weeks ago. And I did my little Target pickup order as well and I just like laid outside and read for a little while. I really liked this Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow book. Um, the first 50 pages were like super captivating, but now it's getting a little slow. I'm at page like 150. Um, I'm definitely intrigued to see where it goes, but I'm like, okay, let, let's pick it back up. I kind of have beef with books that are like longer than 300 pages, unless they're like capital L literature, because I don't know, they just get boring. I feel that way with this current Harry Potter. Don't, don't come for me. Um, yeah, they just get boring. But I know a lot of fantasy books are really long because they like have to build the world and everything. And this book isn't a fantasy book, but anyway, I'm going to do a little bit of grading and then I have a Zoom meeting at two o'clock with someone from YouTube, someone who watches my channel, sent me an email and was like, hey, I'm starting grad school and I like in rec comp and I would love to chat just about what it's like. So these are like some of my favorite Zoom calls to have. So if that is similar to you, send me an email. We can chat. Would it really be another vlog if Megan and I didn't go to Culver's to get some ice cream? What are you looking at? Is that George? It's George. Something happened, I guess. Sorry to all the fans. Not the shenanigans. Did he do something bad that he's like apologizing for? I don't think it would be like capital B bad. Oh, I, I would just read the ad now. Okay. Because I, I just saw shenanigans. Yeah. So, sorry to bring us off track, but we're at Culver's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just some F1 drama. Okay, these are high quality picks. Let's see what else. Ferrari? Okay, Slay. Show us something good. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bad gift. Good morning. Did you have fun sleeping on my pillows? Okay, I'm gonna be brave and try and put together the other chair. Okay, I did it. I built the second bar stool and I fixed the first one enough. They look like they're different heights because they are, because I couldn't get the screws all the way in this, but like sturdy enough. This one tips back just a little, but you can sit in both of them and feel safe. So I'll call that a win. Good morning, happy Saturday. Wearing my Block Me, Unblock Me merch from the Gals on the Go podcast, which I need to finish listening to this week's episode. And I'm gonna make some eggs for breakfast. We made that pizza last night. We have some leftover chopped onions and peppers. So those are really easy and yummy to throw in some eggs. Gonna make some for Megan. I feel like eggs were giving me the ick and someone commented that I should try just egg, which is a really good idea. I should try that. But I bought the happy eggs as I showed you in the grocery haul because they were on sale. And those just like taste so much better. They taste fresher. I don't know how to explain it. They like reversed the ick that eggs were giving me. And then I'm gonna hop into editing the video for the computers and writing conference that I mentioned. And I'm like kind of dreading it because I think I did a really bad job recording and I think it's gonna be really choppy, but good is good enough. That's the mantra from here until the end of grad school. Good is good enough. Done is good enough. A 
little before one o'clock and I think I'm gonna go to a coffee shop because I feel like, I don't know, just getting out of the house. And I was like, oh, I'll go to Soma, I'll sit outside, but and now I notice that my computer's only on 30%, so I need an outlet. So I think I'm just gonna go to Starbucks so I can get a matcha. Okay, I am done working at Starbucks, still currently in the parking lot. I very quickly realized that I forgot to put my camera in my book bag and just left it on the front seat of my car when I was working in Starbucks. And when I realized, I was like, <gasps> and I packed up all my stuff as soon as I could and I ran back to my car just to make sure that it was still there. It was like not even hidden in a glove compartment, it was just on the empty seat. Which some of you guys are probably like, fine, you locked your car, but like, growing up in Miami, like, you don't do that. You really, really don't do that. I mean, I don't think you do that anywhere, but like, that's especially bad to do. Anyway very glad it's still here obviously and I got a lot of work done got a lot of editing done I just have to do a voiceover for the student examples that I want to highlight and then I think I can export it and be good to go I'm waiting to hear back from one student who I just emailed today because I realized there was something that I want to use for work but she was my student like last fall so hopefully she gets back to me anyway let me go home and just hammer this out on my airpods and put away my clothes and do a little tidying of my room and then go pick up some cookies from crumble for dessert tonight Got some crumble cookies. Thank you. Okay, it is 10.30. Megan and I watched the first two episodes of the Amazon Prime show Jury Duty. It is like really funny. <laughs> it's like social experiment meets sitcom meets documentary-ish. I'm not really sure. It meets reality TV. Um, I definitely have some questions about like the ethics of the show and I want to watch a bunch of interviews about how people just like didn't crack up and start laughing in the middle of scenes. Basically everyone is an actor except for one person who thinks he's there filming a documentary and absurd things happen and it's wild. So now I'm going to take a really nice long shower, wash my hair, deep condition my hair. I know that's not like great to do before bed when you can't style it but I don't know I'm like really craving it so it's fine. And I'll go ahead and end off the vlog here. So if you guys made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see in future videos, whether for sit down chats or for vlogs. I'm trying to spice some things up. I feel like I've gotten a little boring with my videos lately. So as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.